Welcome, everybody, to It Tastes Different Gaming News. What's on the news today? Violation has been violated and closed down. All right. So, um, if you haven't heard, Violation uh, was bought up by uh, Embracer Group, and, uh, and now they're closed. Uh, they put out the last Saints Row August of last year, 2022, uh, to... Uh, we enjoyed the game, but, you know, it wasn't like, oh, my God. So, uh, Violation, the team has proudly created world-class entertainment for fans around the globe for 30 years. And they, we've been driven by a passion for a community, always work to, to deliver joy, surprise, and delight. They posted that uh, in June, and Embracer announced uh, restructuring which we all know what restructuring means. Pack your shit and get out. Uh, Embrace her and ask the restructuring. And uh, uh, they're closing them down. Uh, That's what restructuring does. Uh, They have been around a long time. Saints Row. uh, Deep Silver, they were a part of, if I remember right, weren't they not? Oh, you know what? I did not realize that they did uh, Red Faction. I didn't realize that was deep, uh, violation. Oh, crap. That really sucks. We'll never get a new one of those. Um, Embracer Group bought up a lot of stuff over the last five to ten years. Uh, really a lot the last five. Uh, and now they're restructuring. You know, they blew their wad. Now they got no money, apparently, I guess. Um, it's sad to see violation, but volition go because I... You know, it, they make good stuff. Uh, unfortunately, the last stuff they made wasn't as good as it should have been. Um, you know, it breaks my heart to see anybody lose their job. Uh, I mean, especially a studio that's been around that long. Um, you know, maybe that's why they were allowed to get bought up, you know, so the you know previous owners could retire. Um, when, when, they were getting bought up along with all the others. It, it did, uh, it did worry me and, you know, embrace a group. I didn't know much about them except for their name kept coming up on a lot of purchases, a lot of purchases. They, they bought uh, Tomb Raider and uh, many other uh, rights from Square Enix. Um, so it's, uh, it's, there's an alarming concern going to happen. I think, I think we're going to see more of their studios closing up. Mm screwing gamers over so uh nick uh you know what do you think i mean this is uh pretty nuts i mean i just i hate saying it but you know when you spend that much money (laughs) yeah i mean you got to make cuts i guess yeah you do i mean they they spent a hundred million supposedly they spent a hundred million dollars to develop saints row the reboot. Uh, I don't know where that money went into the reboot, but it went into something. I'm not sure. It went in somebody's boot. It went into something in the game, and I don't know what it was. Um, because they, you know, the, yeah. I mean, we reviewed that game, and, and we thought it was it was all right. You know, it was it worked for what it was, but it wasn't anything super special. But it wasn't horrible. But for rebooting uh, such a beloved franchise as such as Saints Row, I feel like Volition didn't, in the Saints Row reboot, didn't do it justice in that case, right? As far as what we know from Saints Row, the the craziness and stuff. A lot of the craziness, and that was what it made it not a Grand Theft Auto clone, was just the amount of wacky, crazy things that could happen, right? Because that was stuff we would love to do in gta just doesn't you know you can get there by cheats and hacks but in this game you know all the cheats are on all the hacks are on right um but in saints row reboot it's like they turned them all off and forgot to turn them on Uh, there was a few crazy things in it but that was about it but um so saints row did i don't know how much they sold i was trying to look to see how much how many units um saints row sold but you know clearly it it didn't make uh, either it didn't or it barely made back the money that it i don't i probably didn't even make back the money that it it you it uh cost to actually make the game so you know they didn't get a return more likely they didn't get a return on their investment and so 
I could understand why Embracer. I can understand why they decided to shut down the studio, but on the other hand, it's like, you know, was it Volition that had a, had a problem here with, with the reboot of the game or was it more of, or was it Embracer's fault, right? Was it higher ups wanting certain things in the game or certain things not in the game or rushing its development or, you know, you know, to get Saints Row out there because it's a beloved series, you know, pushing Volition to, you know, do things that, you know, they normally wouldn't because if they're going to, you know, the original creators of Saints Row, if they're going to reboot or create Saints Row, you would think that, you know, maybe not get out of hell level of insanity uh, that that game had, but like, it felt like uh, the Saints Row reboot was kind of like Saints Row 1. Because Saints Row 1 was had some craziness, but it not to the level that Saints Row 2 did, right? Saints Row 2 like took it and dialed it up to 11. And what they should have redone, or what they should have done when they created Saints Row, the reboot, is they should have recreated... I mean, they didn't recreate the first one, but if they're going to you know, use something as inspiration. Saints Row 2 is what they should have done, right? Saints Row 2 was more, it had the craziness, but it was still grounded, right? As Saints Row continued on, it was still a fun game. It just got more ungrounded, right? <laughs> it got more crazy. Saints Row 3 and then Get Out of Hell and, and, and all that stuff was just like total insanity. Um, where Saints Row 2 was still grounded, but had crazy stuff in it and that's what they should have done but they didn't in this case so while the game was a good grand theft auto knockoff that's all it ended up being right it didn't have you know so that's the reason why it didn't do so well and it's and it's unfortunate because i love saints row it's it's still even with the reboot like i would love to see someone take that franchise and just do what they you know just try again with it because I think Saints Row could really be uh like Grand Theft Auto, a franchise that can again go on throughout, you know, uh, alliterations of itself. They just need to not, you know, scrap what they have with the Saints Row reboot and kind of reboot it again, right? And just make it more of that craziness. But Volition's not going to be there anymore. So I don't know what I mean, even though Volition is not around, they still have the IPs, right? They still have the Saints Row IP. They still have the Red Faction IP. So what are they going to do with those? And, and, and with this, we talked about Embracer closing the other studio. Um, you can check our video talking about that. Uh, Campfire Games, which didn't even get off the ground to even release a game. Um, you know, what are they going to do with these IPs? And, and also remember Embracer came through and bought Crystal Dynamics and they bought like the Legacy of Kane and Tomb Raider IPs and a lot of other IPs too that we haven't heard anything about, right? They're just sitting on them. So, you know, at first when we were talking about Embracer buying all these studios and kind of kind of like snatching up these studios that were having trouble and and kind of coming in to save the day, that was great at the time, but it feels like now that maybe Embracer possibly took more than they they were meaning to. I know I heard something like they had some sort of a deal with Saudi Arabia and that fell through, some big uh, money deal and that fell through for Embracer. And so, you know, that might incorporate it into this, but maybe Embracer has been trying to make too many deals and buying too many acquisitions and things like that, buying too many companies and bringing them on board that now they've kind of oversaturated themselves. And so therefore they're having to, you know, get rid of some of their companies, but also uh, for me, it's, you know, it sucks for the people at Volition. Hopefully they are able to go out and find new jobs at different uh, studios and things like that. But also for those IPs, those IPs such as Red Faction, which I love Red Faction, and Saints Row, you know, hopefully they go to new homes, but they could be just out in the ether somewhere and never, never to be seen again. Right. And that's unfortunate if that ends up being the case. We have a lot of these big companies that do come in and swoop IPs up and stuff and they never do anything with them. Right. And it's like, if you're not going to do anything in Konami, 
you know, talking about you, buddy. I mean, you didn't, you didn't come and snatch up IPs, but your IPs that you, your beloved IPs, you're just say for Silent Hill. Now, now we're finally getting a new, you know, remake of two and some other games, but your other franchises at the moment, uh, you're just chilling on them for, and you know, if you're not going to do anything with them, give them to someone else. But you know, the same thing with Embracer, if you're not going to do anything with these IPs, if you don't have no plans for them, don't hold them hostage, like sell them to other developers out there or something like that. And, uh, let someone else create games for them or, you know, uh, if you don't want to sell them, like contract them out to other developers here, you can have Tomb Raider, go make a Tomb Raider, right? <laughs> or something like that. You know, hopefully Crystal Dynamics is working on that, but who knows? Um, what do you think, Pat? Yeah. I, if, if the rumors are true that they spent a hundred million dollars developing the Saints Row reboot, that seems completely asinine to me. I mean, somebody, somebody, I don't know. I mean, let's just put it this way. Their highest selling game that they ever put out was Saints Row the Third, which sold five and a half million copies. Every other one has sold, you know, Saints Row, the original sold two million. Saints Row 2 is 3.4. Three and, and Saints Row 4 was like a million copies. So what the hell were they banking on? For that hundred million dollar, well, they expect to only make like ten million dollars off the whole thing. I don't, I don't know. Like, and, and to just kind of go back to like the Saints Row One style, where and it really, to me, it really still wasn't even Saints Row One style. I'm sorry, but when I played Saints Row One, I was like, it was you know, Grand Theft Auto was out there, and I was like this is unique because you're playing as a gang and it really felt like gang warfare. Like I'm taking over territory from this gang and, and they could take over territory back from me and this fight back and forth. But the saints row reboot was nothing like that. I'm with Nick. It felt like a complete ripoff, a bad ripoff of grand theft auto. Like it had nothing that seemed saints row. Like saints row was so outlandish. The style, even in the original one, it was like, I'm going to build my empire. I want to dress my gang up the way I want them. And you can do some of that in this reboot, but it all felt like this fake wannabe game that wasn't Saints Row. It felt like a wannabe Saints Row. And I don't know how else to explain it, but it didn't, in my opinion, didn't re even recapture what Saints Row originally did. And if they were wanting to recapture Saints Row, they should have followed the Saints Row 3 model because that was their best selling model ever. Don't get me wrong. I loved four. I thought four was hilarious. And the get out of hell. Uh, I thought that was even great too. I loved those. They were so funny and just so ridiculous, but they had their place. And they, uh, and so far this game is the lowest on the totem pole. I think out of all of them, you know, it didn't make anywhere near the sales of the other ones from what I understand. So I don't know. I feel bad for them. And I hope that some of their, 230 plus employees got reabsorbed into Embracer. I hope they didn't let them all go. I couldn't tell from the article if they were just the entire studio was shut and everybody was told, see ya, you know, because of mass layoffs. And and what happened? Did they did they give did they give people separation? You know, did they give them something to separate them? I don't know. Um, you know, they've got to do something. That's 230 plus people that work for that studio. What happened to them? Um, and I'm surprised Nikki didn't make your comment about step two out of three for Embracer Group's restructuring plan. I was waiting for him to come out with it, but yeah, you know, Embracer Group, I don't know, Embracer Group lost like 40% of their value when they announced that they lost this two million, two billion dollar deal with some company, this mystery two billion dollar deal. Um, so they lost the deal and then their stock took a plunge like 40 point, you know, they lost 40% of their valuation off of that. I'm like, yeah, you know, so they're hurting right now. And in my opinion, it's because of their own doing, they weren't smart with their investments. They just bought up every little thing they could. And now the studios that now, I don't know what Volition was working on. I don't, I don't know if we, anybody even knew outside of their own teams, what they were working on, but. The Saints, let's say you mentioned Saints Row just came out a year ago. So a year after they came out, they're shutting the studio down. After the game came out, they're shutting the studio down. And I will admit the game was okay. It wasn't great. It wasn't the best game ever. It To me, it didn't feel like a Saints Row game. So, um, 
but it was a game and it was decent enough and it had a good it had a decent player bank player base so uh you know hopefully they took care of those people that they laid off gave them some type of severance pay probably not you know i don't know i don't know i hope they did um but none of that stated in the article and if you worked from bracer let us know if they did or if they just pretty much told you see you and get out the door note on the door when you show up that everybody that everybody's been laid off you know crappy things that some of these places do that's what worries me about any giant company buying a large group of, of um studios like even when microsoft buys these studios and and sony it always the back of my mind always goes how long are they going to give them to be profitable before they tell them we're shutting you down you know because they're there are some great studios out there. Now, on the other hand, would Volition still be around if Embracer didn't pick them up? You have to ask yourself that. If Volition, if Embracer didn't pick up Volition, would they have been able to put out Saints Row, the reboot, or not? Were they in that much trouble where they wouldn't be able to make the game? Or or what? Or would they have been able to make the game, rest on the amount of money that they made, which I don't think they covered their $100 million deal, so... They, you know, I don't know. I feel bad for them, but at the same time, the Saints Row game was not the best. And they're like, didn't meet sales expectations. I can imagine that because it was not that fun of a game. It was fun to drop in, come in and out, but it was not. It didn't recapture anything in the old Saints Row. And in my opinion, it didn't even pick the best parts of Grand Theft Auto to rip off. <laughs> so um, I don't mean, I feel bad for all those people, but at the same time, they not been putting out a whole lot of good stuff. Now I love their stuff. I like Summoner and Descent and all that stuff they used to make back in the day when they were like what the Phalanx or Phalax or whatever studios. I, you know, I love that stuff. Red Faction was just okay to me. Um, you know, Agents of Mayhem, I think that thing kind of bombed. So that wasn't something that I even I saw it and I was like, this is cool. And then when it started to come close to release, I'm like, oh, this sucks. <laughs> so um but like I said, I like Summoner. Free Space was pretty interesting, too. That was a decent game that they made. Um, so Parallax Studio Software was the ones that were, that's what they were called when they made the Descent games. So I don't know, man. I feel bad for those people. But at the same time, I asked myself, would Volition be able to have made the Saints Row game if Embracer didn't pick them up? Or were they doing just fine before Embracer came along? I don't know. Because they got them as a package deal, right? With Koch Media, Coach Media. Cock Media, I don't know how the hell you pronounce their name. C O C H, you know, Coke Media. I don't know what they are, a bunch of Coke heads. I don't know. You just so, want to say Coke. Yeah. So, you know, I don't know. Were they doing all right? Was Coach and Koch Media or whatever they pronounce their name, were they looking to maybe shut the studio down because it wasn't making money or could they not afford to? I don't know. So, the a lot of what ifs that we don't know that are behind the scenes. I feel bad for their 230 plus employees and hopefully they did something for them or moved a large chunk, if not the majority around to other places within their business, but no one in an investment company, they probably just let them all go. I've seen way too many investment companies swoop in, gobble up a bunch of companies and then start shutting doors. of the ones that they can't turn around within 18 months or eight months or a year or something work for companies like that, where you come in and they're handing out boxes to clean out your desk because, you know, I feel bad for those people and hopefully something happens for them. And if not, I hope that you find something quick for a job, you know, so good luck out there. I hope you guys are finding something. Hopefully they took care of you. Well, uh, you know, I may be wrong. Uh, might be just my opinion, but I think what really hurt them was the agents of mayhem. It was another service game that, that died. I mean, everybody was trying to jump on the bucks. Somebody made the decision to try to set a, a game of service game in the Saints, you know, world. And, you know, it bombed. I mean, it it sucked. And when you they they dropped a lot of money into that. I can't remember. I, I tried to look it up, but uh, they dropped a lot of money into making it and they failed. I mean it's it's plain and simple. It's another game of service game that that Basically, in my opinion, I think Kilda Studio, that's what got them bought up. Uh, I think if they would have put that time and effort to make a new Saints Row themselves with, before being bought, I think uh, I think the reboot or the next Saints Row they made would have probably been better. 
Uh, but it, it typically what kills a game and a company anymore to me just seems like it's a it's a suit and tie guy uh, worried about the stockholders, not about the game. A quality game will find an audience. That is my opinion. It's always been my opinion. Uh, I Nick plays games I I can't stand or I don't care for, but they're good games to him. They find it, their audiences, and I think uh, that's you know I, that's the problem. Is it's too much about money. Wasn't Agents of Mayhem only a single player game though? I th- I didn't think that was multiplayer. No, Agents of Mayhem. No, that was a. Uh, I thought that was a single player action game that no. they made where you're like a squad or, of three or, or something. Mm, I didn't think that was a game think, service No, game. I th- I might be thinking of the one before that. Uh, it wasn't Agents of Mayhem or a Violation. It was uh, oh crap! It was it was a Microsoft Studio game. Now that I think about it, I was thinking. Yeah, it was I this think one. it looked and reminded me very much because it, it was talking about coming out at the same time. But I, I didn't think it was Agents. Because I, I swore Agents of Mayhem. You know, Agents of Mayhem is a single player game. Yes, I am thinking. So what's the one? I'm thinking of like the it. one that came out very, very near that one. I, I remember something so coming I, out I, that looked very much like it. That. Yeah. Still, and it doesn't take it, away the fact that Agents of Mayhem sucked. It bad. did. It was yes. bad. It was yeah. a bad game. Yeah. yeah. They should have just made a Saints Row. I mean, plain and simple, should have just made a Saints Row game. Uh, we were all excited for it when it came out. We all played the crap out of it. But it was missing, and I agree with Nick. It was missing that Saints Rowness to it. Uh, when the original came out, it was GTA with humor and and wackiness, and then they they and pumped up the numbers. Yeah, exactly. And then they they pumped it up for two. Now I think the reason three sold as well as it did is because it rested on the laurels of two. Because two was a two was better than three to me. I love three though. Don't get me wrong. Uh, I mean, like Pat, uh, Pat even said, "Get out of hell" was a blast. But uh, you know, I mean, I understand they can't keep making Saints Row. They can't have Saints Row ninety five. I mean, they just you you got to make something new. But they could have made another uh, GTA is on that track to do that though. Well, no, they don't. They, they just keep making the exact same one. And yeah, just they keep making GTA it. 5 over <laughs> exactly. and over and over. But, uh, you know, they, they could have came out with a Red Faction. A new Red Faction would have been, you know, awesome. But, you know, I, I don't know what we're going to do now because I don't. I When somebody gets bought up, my first fear is what games do we lose? Every time that a company is bought, we lose games. Uh, EA buys up companies all the time. And what happens? Guess those games get by. Uh, Square Enix, I mean, they have so many IPs are sitting on that we're dying for. And then, you know, they put out that shitty dinosaur game, uh, Exoprimal. You know, it's, I don't know. I don't get it. Uh, but, Basically, when you see a big company buy a little company, say goodbye. You know, might as well pack your crap because you're going to get unemployed pretty soon any, anymore. So. Yeah. EA doesn't like Command and Conquer. They hate no. Command and Conquer. Yeah, because it never sold well. Well, no, no. They love, they love Command and Conquer, but only for mobile. Only for mobile. Only for Because they've come out with like two mobile Command and Conquers in the last few years. And I'm like, what? In what uh, universe does that make sense? Yeah, that's not command and conquer. That's beg and shit. I, I freaking that's bend gosh, over and mean. take it. That's not command and yep. conquer. It's bend over and take it. It's bend My over EA. and we'll conquer you. Yep. There you go. <laughs> All right. Well, before uh, you know, we treat this topic like Embracer treats our game studios. You got anything else? All right. Well, let us know what you think. Do you? Uh, you think we'll ever see a Saints Row again? What do you think of Embracer Group? I mean, they bought a lot. What else are we going to lose? Who else is going to get fired? What other IPs are going to get completely foobarred? Uh, let us know in the comments below. Also, uh, hit that like, hit that share, hit that subscribe, hit that notification, hit all the 
buttons there that make you feel happy, make us feel happy. We like happy. And uh, we will see you next time. See ya. Thank you.